Whenever we want to transfer data from one place to another in a computer system or from one device to another, we've got two options. We can either use serial or we can use parallel data transfer. The difference is that in serial, we use one bus line, one data line from the sender to the receiver. When we say sender to receiver, we're just assuming pretty much any device or any component in the computer is not important. For example, this could be a printer, this could be the computer, this could be a USB device, etc. It doesn't matter. So in serial, we've got one, what we call a data bus going from the sender to the receiver and back again. The data bus is simply something that conducts data. In here, we've got, let's say we're going to send a 4 bits, 0, 1, 1, 0, okay? So we're going to send 4 bits along here. With serial data transfer, all that happens is, in basic terms, they line up on the bus line and they go over one at a time, okay? So this one would go over first, then this one would go over, then this one, and finally the one on the end, okay? Obviously this is a pretty simplified version of how this works. There are lots of other considerations uh, to go into this and lots of other things that happen between there and there, but in basic terms they just go along the bus line like this, okay? In parallel, instead of having one line, we have as many lines as we want really, for the purposes of this one, I'll draw four bus lines, but you can have um, more than that, okay? But for this one, we're just gonna have four. So, the difference is that in serial, we sent them all along the same bus line. In parallel, we're gonna send one across each bus line, okay? So, I've got a zero here, one there, one there, and a zero there. So now, each bit has its own dedicated bus line. Obviously, if we had a massive long um, series of data, then we wouldn't be able to send it all along different lines. It all depends on how many lines you have here and how long your data is. But with this four bit example, we've managed to fit each bit on its own line. Okay, so this one is going to go on its own over there. This one is gonna go over there. Oops, that's not a zero, that's a one. So this one is going to go there, that's going to go there, and that's going to go there. So from the sender to the receiver, they've all gone along different bus lines. Okay. However, it gets a little bit more complicated when you talk about the speed. You would assume, using common sense, that this must be faster. Because obviously each one of these has got a separate bus line, and therefore they're going to arrive there a lot faster because they don't have to come along the same line. However, in practice it doesn't really work like that. Firstly, we get a couple of problems with parallel. If you run both of these at a relatively slow frequency, okay, across very short distances, then parallel would theoretically be able to achieve this transfer quicker. However, when we start increasing the distance of the bus line and the transfer um, distance, and we also start to increase the frequency so these are going extremely fast, we get a couple of problems with parallel. One of the problems that we get is we get something called crosstalk. And what happens is, because these bus lines are so close together, this one here has the potential to jump up onto this line here, okay? And possibly this one here could jump down to this one here. So we'd end up receiving a completely different uh, signal than we try to send. So the data would be completely different on the receiving end than it was on the sending end because of crosstalk. Also, we have something called skewing, which means that we have to wait for the slowest byte or the slowest bit in this sequence to arrive here. So even if these ones here um, arrive quite quickly, so if we've got over here this one this one and this one we still have to wait for this one to travel along the bus line before we can make up the entire um, data transfer okay and this is called skewing on serial we don't really get those problems because we've got just one bus line okay so we don't have the problem of crosstalk because there isn't more than one bus line and we don't have the problem of skewing um, like we do here because obviously there is only one bus line so we don't have to wait well, we do have to wait 
for the for the other bits to arrive but this is always a, an issue with serial anyway it's it's not solved by parallel because of skewing so in practice what happens is serial can work a lot faster and it can transfer data faster than parallel simply because of the issues that we have when we run parallel al along long distances and at fast frequencies okay however along short distances parallel is usually okay because the short distance doesn't allow the problems to occur as frequently as they would over a long distance so parallel is generally used now um, in integrated circuits um, and not really when we're going from device to device okay when we're going from device to device we generally use serial now it used to be the case that you'd use parallel for things such as printers but now we use serial uh, because it's much faster at transferring out of um, it's much more accurate sorry at transferring over a, a fast frequency okay so if you're in an exam and you're asked then you about which one is the fastest then it's better to elaborate rather than just say one of these so you could say parallel is faster in theory at low frequencies and over short distances however once you increase the distance uh, between the sender and the receiver and you increase the frequency then serial becomes faster 